Hi guys and welcome back. And today I get on with uh, fulfilling a promise I made a couple of videos ago, which was to show you in a bit of detail how I paint these 135th scale figures. And this example will be the last of the German artillery crew for the 88mm diorama. So we'll start off by having a look at the paint, and we've got Vallejo paint German grey, we've got Panzer dark grey, we've got German black, we've got black, we've got grey green, we've got field grey, we've got light grey, we've got sea grey, medium. New wood, leather brown, armor brown, mahogany, that's my favorite color. We've got German black brown, gun gray, and that is the, not all, but the vast majority of the paints to do the uniforms. Some of the other stuff we've got is the wet palette, some clean water, a triple O paintbrush, a number one paintbrush, and a number six flat brush. And most importantly of all, because it's critical to stay hydrated when you're working hard painting figures like this, is some liquid refreshment of choice. Tonight I've gone for the Canadian Club Dry Premium Strength. So if the figure's looking a bit wonky, you'll know I've had a few too many of these along the way. And the figure is the last one in the dio, and that's one of the loaders. So whilst the sponge on the um, wet palette is very moist, uh, I also like to smear just a little bit of water over the top of the paper. You don't have to do this. This is just the thing I like to do. And that com comes back to giving me some options then with uh, little bits of puddles of water if I want to make a, a particular colour a bit more translucent and what have you. And then because this is a, a German figure, it's going to be predominantly grey. So I get the full range of the colours down onto the wet palette. So they're all there. And that, that also gives them a little bit of time to absorb some of the moisture as well because I like to have a fairly uh, translucent mixture and build up the layers rather than go heavy out of a, like the, the core of the pigment of the pot, if you like. And then as you can see, let's work it in to the surface of the palette and then sort of satisfy myself that it feels like it's the right consistency. And that doesn't necessarily mean I'm consistent in the uh, degree of consistency. And bizarrely, I only realised this when I was reviewing this footage, but then I had a look at some other uh, figures that I'd painted as well. And I seem to do the same thing subconsciously every way. I start at the feet and work my way up for the first coverage. Uh, but I think you'll see a little bit later on, although I haven't put this uh, later footage into the video yet, so I'm not 100% sure, but I think you'll see a little bit later on that when I come back to do the second coat, I start at the head and work my way down. So that's just me. That's not the right way to do it. None of this is me saying it's the right way to do it. This is just the way I do it. I'm not an efficient painter. Uh, I tend to be a botherer. So I will go back over and over and over in places. I try and start out reasonably carefully. Uh, so, I, you know, colouring between the lines. I, I try and stay between the lines, but I'm not fanatical about it. And I'm also, nor am I stressed about it. If uh, I go into the wrong areas, because that's very easily fixed up, it's very easily touched up, and I like sometimes the tonal variation you can get from that in places if there's some darker colours that you end up covering up with lighter colours. Having said all that, you can see this, so uh, tell what's going on. I'll leave you to have a look at the first coat going down across the figure and uh, see if I can find some funky music, and uh, I'll come back in a little while.
So I've done the boots, the pants, and the jacket, and now coming back in with the darker version. And again, look, so much of this is personal preference, well, in my view, uh, which might be worth a little philosophical discussion about what the right colours are and what the wrong colours are to paint uniforms or anything for that matter. And my philosophical belief is there's no right or wrong colours. It's what you are happy with in terms of the final result. Now, having said that, we understand that German uniforms are grey or grey-green if they're not camo. So, you know, you, you couldn't be rocking this bloke out in pink pants and an orange top. But within the confines of it needs to be grey, then there's tonal variation, there's different ink dye manufacturers, uh, different runs, different batches, different length of age of uniforms, a distinct lack of really decent uh, colour pictures from the era. So I subscribe to the thing that I like the pants to be slightly darker than the jacket, and that would um, flow through to my real life view of things anyway, unless it's, of course, a suit. And therefore, you go your hardest to produce the result that you particularly like. And yes, I know that will frustrate some people and uh, say, no, it was definitely this shade and that was produced by the, you know, the Mung Jungan um, dye company, uh, which had a consistent palette since 1926 and blah, blah, blah. And that all might be true. And I respect people who have got that knowledge. But it doesn't interest me, uh, and it doesn't give me a more pleasing end result than just doing it the way I like to do it. So anyway, that's enough. Get off my soapbox. As you can see, I've just been whacking in some of the darker colours, finding some natural areas to shade in the in the recesses of the groinal region, uh, under the armpits, under the helmet. And again, all of this is just building up light layers of fairly translucent paint to... Um, give me a basis that, to then work on uh, the detail painting and a little bit more uh, work in terms of shade and tone. As I keep saying, and I won't, this will be the last time I say it, there's no right or wrong. I'm not putting myself forward as an expert here. I'm just saying this is the way I like to do it. From my perspective, I like the results that uh, this gives. Are there better painters than me out there? Absolutely. I'd say there's tens of thousands of people who are better painters than me, and I dare say there are thousands of people who are better painters than anyone we've ever seen on youtube so i don't hold too much stock in in people proclaiming their brilliance one way or the other my theory is if you like the results that you're getting and it's pleasing to your eye then keep on keeping on because i think that's what's important you want to have fun with this you're not entering art competitions and if you are then i don't think you're entering them on the back of a 35 millimeter plastic figure anyway let's move on to the next bit so here we just get a little bit of the gun grey, and all I want to do with this is effectively really semi-lightly dry brush onto the helmet prior to the subsequent actual grey coats going on. So that'll give me the opportunity to wipe some of the latter paint off. And then on with the field grey to do the jacket. So just putting it on the wet palette and then just testing it to get the consistency right. So this wants to be, um, while well, the initial coat, I want to be relatively translucent as well and have a little bit of viscosity so it will get into the lower parts. And you can see they're just sort of lightly brushing it across the figure. So now I'm just taking the darker German grey and mixing it in with the lighter grey just to give me, a um, again, a translucent highlight colour just to work my way through. And this is for the pants, obviously. A bit of that off my brush. I don't want it to be too sloppy. And then putting it on 
and sort of particularly looking for the raised areas. It's a sort of uh, hybrid dry brushing with not a dry brush, if that makes sense. Probably doesn't, but uh, hopefully the picture explains it better than my talking does. So using some German black brown, which is another one of my favorite colors, and getting this quite translucent as well. Getting a little bit off the brush. And then this is mainly to put some depth of colour into the boots. So at the moment they've only had that translucent black base colour. And again, not trying to get it everywhere, just using that sort of left to right motion. Uh, and that will find, in this instance, the depths, not the peaks. And then just wiping off uh, a little bit of the excess with the Q-tip in the case of the helmet, because I thought there was just a bit too much there and on the boots just to get the highlight areas back again. And just to hurry the drying process along, I'll give it a squirt with the empty airbrush. Make sure it's empty. I prefer this over a hairdryer, A, because hairdryer extra clutter on the bench, and B, sometimes the heat can have an effect on the plastic or the paint. So here I'm just lightening up the green-grey uh, with a little bit of light grey, and that's to repeat the same wash, dry, wet, dry wash, if that makes sense. It does make sense. On the jacket. And with the jacket, a little more careful about where I put it on, so really seeking out the high areas and then using a completely dry brush, so a brush with no paint on it at all, to remove any surplus and also to blend it in a little bit to the base colour. Possibly my favourite colour for finishing off belts is mahogany. So I had base coated the belt with just a leather brown, but in a tragic SD card overload incident, uh, I lost that last piece of footage. I'd filmed 20 minutes of um, black, which isn't ideal. So uh, trust me, I, I did put the uh, base coat down all by myself, and now just going it over, over it with this mahogany. Not necessarily trying to get it everywhere. I'm happy for some little bits to be missed, so there's some variation in the colour again. Really hard to see. Normally I paint this stuff with my nose almost touching the figure, so forgive me if I've gone outside the lines because I was struggling honestly struggling to see exactly where the lines were. For German troops I usually just do the buckles and the belt straps and the buttons with the gun grey. I don't get too stressed out about that because there'll be washes over this and then there'll be some pastels and the like so uh, it all tends to dull down to a nondescript button-like colour. The buckles and the other bits I'm happy to be metallic. So the Vallejo Beige Red is always, always, always my base colour for flesh. I really like it, and I think it's got a good depth of tone. And faces and flesh in general for me are a case of just building up layers and getting shading and lights and very complex, really hard to do, I think, faces. Faces and eyes are the things I struggle with the most. So I like to have a fairly diluted wash of the paint and then just build that up gradually with different tones and layers as it takes shape. I haven't got a formula for this, I just keep going until I think it's okay. Uh, I'd never be presumptuous enough to say they look really great, but I think they don't look too bad. And on to the dreaded eyes. Now, I use off-white to fill in the eye area. 
And again, normally my nose is touching the figure and I've got my eight times magnifying um, spectacles on. So you can see I didn't make a great fist of this. That happens normally sometimes anyway. And again, I don't get stressed about that because you can always come back in with the flesh tone and adjust and in some cases that ends up with a better result anyway so it's a bit trial and error and you know if you're blessed with good eyesight and a steady hand then this should not be that hard but if you're not then you might have to have a couple of goes at it but uh, as long as it looks okay in the finish i mean it's so hard to see in the finished diorama anyway uh, they look terrible when you do the close-up pictures but most of the time they look reasonable from uh, you know normal viewing distance of the dio and I went for some brown eyeballs, and I think I always do the, the left eye, so the one on the right as you're viewing it, I always do the left eye okay, and I always cock up the right eye, uh, the one on the left for some reason, which means I'll have to go back in later on and just do a little bit of adjustment with some off-white to get that eyeball back into some sort of shape. And really all you're going to see now is about uh, 40 minutes of rooting around with different tones uh, to get some variation in the flesh. So I won't talk my way through that. It's just mixing whites and pinks and what have you together to uh, do some washes and get some definition around different parts. And uh, again, it is beauty is in the eye of the beholder, I guess. Also tried to, um, there's a really prominent carotid artery moulded into this, so I thought I'd just get a little bit of blue undertones in there just uh, for something different. So we're getting towards the end now. It's uh, time for a gloss coat. So this is the Vallejo Gloss Acrylic. And I mix that very scientifically with a little bit of thinners, as you can see, and give it a reasonably liberal coat. And this particular gloss coat is in preparation for the decals because I've got lots of badges that I want to stick on this figure. I've gone over the top, I know, but I just wanted to show you a few different things going on. And now just putting the decals on. So the Tamiya one, which is the one I use for the helmet, takes its normal 30 to 60 seconds in the water. But the other ones, which are from my friend Woody, only need a few seconds in the water. And uh, if you're not quick, they'll just float away all by themselves. And now a second coat of gloss, and this is in preparation for doing some of the washes, and we are just about there. Mm -hmm. 
So in the home straight now and just doing the oil wash, so I thought I would go with a black with a tinge of dark green. So just mixing up the oils together. Get that into a little shot glass. Who knew you could use shot glasses for things other than tequila? Using some white spirits and make that a really diluted solution. You can just see the green coming through initially. And mix it all up nice and thoroughly with a paintbrush. You can squash all the little globules of oil paint. So this is where I whip out Softy. And this is an old brush I've had for a hundred years. It's a Humbrol number no. six. But I love the bristles and I just feel confident when I'm using this to put the washes on. And uh, again, reasonably liberally, but not crazy. The beauty of the oil wash, of course, is that you can go in with a dry brush or a brush with a little bit of white spirit on it and tidy up after it's dried. Or if you see as it's drying, it's looking a bit lumpy. So uh, a very forgiving thing to do with the oil wash. And now just making a second wash with the classic Burnt Umber. And this is the one I use always for dirt. And you might have noticed I didn't touch the skin or the face with the black wash. That is where the Burnt Umber will also be applied. You may have also noticed that it looked like I added the Burnt Umber into the black green wash. In fact, that was the clean white spirits that I just washed the brush off in. So whilst it looked black green it was very very slight and the brown certainly took up the majority of the pigment in there so i'm a little more careful with the application of this and gently dabbing it onto the face and the hand and then in the sort of lower parts of the body the legs and any of the low areas that might have picked up a little bit of dirt but i try and keep it away from the upper torso to a certain extent but around the belts and the webbing perhaps uh, i might just give it a little lick so that tends to find its own way. Best not to be heavy handed with it if you don't want it to uh, be a really dirty figure. And now just doing a little bit of that careful cleanup, just taking it off some of the high areas uh, where it might have interfered with the highlights, reducing the amount in some places. I don't like those faces that are really starkly bright highlights with uh, very dark, dark uh, shadows. It's all personal preference, but uh, for me, I like it to be subtle. This is close to being okay, but not necessarily perfect. And that's it. So just whack on the final doll coat, which is the Vallejo Matte Acrylic. And we'll have a spin around on the magic turntable, a few close-up pictures, and then I'll come back to say goodbye.
And that's pretty much it. So, look, hopefully that uh, filled in half an hour of your isolation day and you maybe got something out of it. I hope you did. So I think the, the main takeaway for me on painting anything or doing the hobby in general is just to have fun. I don't think there's a right or a wrong. There's a what's right for you and what you enjoy and what you like the look of. So if you keep that in mind, I don't think you can ever get too stressed in the hobby and it is not supposed to be a stressful hobby. With that, thank you all very much for taking the time to watch. Subscribe if you're not already subscribed and click the little bell so you get the reminder notices. Like if you liked. Share for some reason. And as always, I really look forward to your comments. So take care, everyone. I know it's tough in the new normal of being in isolation, but it's the right thing to do, I think. And uh, I can see that the numbers are beginning to come down around the world in most places, which is really good to see. So look after yourselves and I will catch you in the next one.